transmission control protocol or tcp is one of the highly used protocols of transport layer being a protocol in the transport layer it has to perform all the necessary functions of transport layer few of the functions which are addressed or which are carried out by the tcp protocol are addressing multiplexing demultiplexing flow control error control and congestion control as in other protocols tcp also includes tcp also includes control information information in front of the data unit for further transmission this is the data unit and it adds some control information in front in front of this data unit the data unit in the transport layer is called a segment with respect to tcp it is called tcp segment and the header part here is called the tcp header and in this video we wanted to explore the structure of the control information of the control information which is inserted by the tcp protocol or we better to say we wanted to explore the tcp header the structure of the tcp header which is added in front of the data in the transport layer and we also wanted to explore how these control pro control bit streams or this header helps in performing the functions of the transport layer one it provides connection oriented and connection oriented and guaranteed service number two it ensures reliable services through flow control error control and congestion control and number three it is a slow protocol in action because it has to keep track of all the sessions that under progress the quality of services provided to the end user by transmission control protocol or tcp is better compared to other protocols like udp that is why the size of the header size of the header is bigger in tcp compared to udp protocol the figure shows the tcp header structure the header comprises of two parts the first part is called the fixed part and second part is called optional part the fixed part comprises of 20 bytes and the optional part comprises of 0 to 40 bytes the 20 bytes fixed part is also called the mandatory header and most of the control information required to provide a connection oriented service with reliable delivery is included in the mandatory header the fixed header part 
in a transport layer header carries most of the necessary information about the segment. The fixed part comprises of 20 bytes and it is divided into 10 different fields. Out of these 10 fields, source port and the destination port, these two ports, each of them having 16 bits, it, the source port and destination ports are used to identify the end processes. The source port SP, it identifies the end process in the sender side, whereas the destination port identifies the end process in the destination side. Three most important functions of the transport layer including addressing, addressing of end processes, end-to-end -end delivery and multiplexing and demultiplexing. These three operations are performed with the help of these two port numbers. The next two fields in the TCP header are sequence number and acknowledgement number. The sequence number and acknowledgement number both are of 32 bits and the sequence number the sequence number is used to uniquely identify a segment in a transport layer. For example, suppose that a source S is communicating a segment to destination D and the segment which is communicated by the source will mark it with the sequence number with a sequence number. Let us suppose that the sequence number assigned to that segment is 10. And when the segment with sequence number 10 is received by the destination, then it will send one acknowledgement packet to the source and it will put the number 11 in the acknowledgement field. By receiving this acknowledgement packet, the source will understand that the packet or the sequence number 10 or the segment with sequence number 10 is received and the destination is now expecting the segment with sequence number 11. In short, the sequence number indicates or uniquely identifies the segment under transmission which is currently transmitting and the acknowledgement number indicates or it implies the next expected sequence number, expected segment or sequence number of the segment. Next field that we want to discuss is the offset field. This offset field is of four bits and it is also known as header length. In other words, this field indicates the length of the TCP header. In reality, the number in this field is multiplied by 4 to get the actual size of the header in bytes. For example, if this entry, this entry is equals to 5, then the length of the header will be equals to 5 into 4, which is equals to 20 bytes. The entries in this field, the offset field, could be minimum of 5 and it can go up to 15, which gives you minimum of 20 bytes header and maximum of 60 bytes header. Out of these 60 bytes, 20 bytes are the fixed part and 40 bytes are optional TCP header. The next field is the reserve field. This six, 6 bits reserve field is not used in TCP header. They are kept for some experimental work. If somebody wants to design a new protocol based on TCP or new functions in based on TCP, then they can make use of these 6 bits. Normally in TCP header, these all bits are set to set to 0. Next field 
after 6 bit reserve field is the flags there are 6 flags used in a TCP header and these 6 bits of flags assist the TCP operation in many ways including to establish connections to send data to terminate connections and many more the first flag here this flag is called urgent flag u this first flag is urgent urgent u r g urgent urgent flag this urgent flag when it is set to one the data contained in the segment is treated as urgent the urgent pointer in the header is closely associated the urgent pointer means this field this field which carries along with the tcp header is important when this bit is set to one this urgent pointer it indicates the end location of the data for example if this is the data this is the header out of this header here is the urgent flag and if the urgent flag is set to one then this header contains one value one data in the urgent field let us suppose that this is urgent pointer field and this urgent pointer field carries some information like say some address this address indicates where the urgent data ends this location is stored here this is a pointer it's kind of linked list this pointer is pointed to this particular location it indicates that the urgent pointer is here and up to this point here is the urgent data and rest of them are the normal data normal data so this urgent flag and the urgent pointer is very closely associated when this urgent flag is set to one then there is a meaning of the content in the urgent pointer the value in the urgent pointer indicates where the urgent data ends and the urgent data is started immediately after the header The second flag is called the acknowledgement ACK acknowledgement flag this is directly associated with the acknowledgement number this is associated with the acknowledgement number if this bit is set to 1 it indicates that the content or the acknowledgement number or sequence ID which is included in the acknowledgement field is a valid field valid field it indicates that this segment is carrying one acknowledgement number and this is been designed or this is been prepared by the destination and it sends to the source the sequence number given here let us suppose that 11 and this is the indication that source need to send the sequence number 11 the segment with sequence number 11 in the next transmission the third flag is called the push flag push flag and it is identified or it is denoted as p s h push flag this push flag tells an application that the data should be transmitted immediately and on receipt of the segment it should not wait till complete reception of the segment rather than waiting it should immediately transfer the data to the application layer after that this is called reset flag reset which is mostly denoted as rst 
if this bit is set to 1, the receiver, that is the destination, will immediately reset the connection. Reset the connection without further incorporating any termination process. And this is called abrupt or sudden abrupt or sudden close down of the ongoing connection. Next two bits are the this one is called sync bit S Y N C sync and which is also denoted by S Y N and then after the sync bit it is called the F I N finish finish bit F I N I S H this sync and the finish these two bits are used by the transmission control protocol TCP protocol in order to establish and terminate a connection establish and terminate a connection when sender initiates the conversation with any destination then it sends one sync packet this is source this is destination and at the very beginning of the communication the sender sends one packet where the sync bit is set to one on receipt of such information or message by the destination it will prepare for reception of data it will perform all the preliminary operations to be carried out by the destination in order to receive data then this is this is carried out at the beginning of the conversation once this process is completed sync packet exchange is completed the data transmission takes place in the form of segments then finally when everything is over then sender will send one segment with pin bit set to one this fin bit set to one and setting of fin bit indicates that the connection is going to close no more data to arrive that's why the destination will perform all the wind up scenario all the necessary things to wind up the connection and it will terminate the connection so these are the six flags six flags or flag bits used in the transmission control protocol tcp and these transmission control protocol flags are used for proper functioning of the operations of transport layer next window field this field is used by the receiver to indicate to the sender the amount of data that it is capable of accepting. If this field carries 10, it implies that the receiver can accept 10 bytes of data at a time. To understand it better, let us assume that this is a sender and this is a receiver. And the receiver is sending a packet or message to the source indicating this field as 10. So what does this mean? On receipt of the segment with the windows field set to 10, this sender will understand that it can send continuously 10 bytes maximum of 10 by suppose that this the sender has created one segment with segment size 5 bytes then he can immediately send another segment with segment size 5 after that the sender has to wait here the sender has to wait until acknowledgement of any one of the segment is arrived because by the number 10 in the windows field indicates that the receiver can receive maximum of 10 bytes after re receiving the 10 bytes unless the data is consumed or this is removed from the buffer in the receiver side he is not capable of accepting more data that's why he the sender has to wait once the acknowledgement of the any one of the segment this previous segment say arrives then it means that 
5 bytes of the data been consumed by the receiver now this 5 byte space is available so it, the sender can immediately send the next 5 bytes this is the indication of the content in the window field and there is a uh, method of calculating this value it is dependent on the bandwidth of the transmission media bandwidth and the delay it is a it is computed the window size is computed using the bandwidth and the delay suppose that the bandwidth of the transmission link is equals to 10 mbps mbps which is equals to 10 then six zeros two, three four five six this bits per second and let us say delay is equals to 10 milliseconds which is equals to 0 0.01 seconds then the window size will be equals to window size will be equals to 10 then six zeros multiplied by 0 0.01 bits which gives you a size of nearly 10 this 2 will be removed 0 0 0 0 bits if we convert it to bytes then or kilobytes if we convert it to kilobytes it will give you approximately equals to 12 kb so this is the size of the window which is computed based on the link bandwidth and the delay. The checksum field is used for error control. Error control. This field includes a number which is called the checksum. and compute it by adding the content of each of the fields it is this number is generated initially this checksum is set to zero and then it calculates the checksum by adding all the content source port destination port and all other fields content of all other fields plus the payload or the data and finally it computes or it generates one value in hexadecimal form and that value is added to this moreover while finding this checksum it also uses one pseudo ip header the pseudo ip header is a dummy ip header which includes the source ip destination ip protocol ip or protocol id and the header length tcp header length plus payload length of header plus payload in number of bytes all together adding all the fields it gives a number which is called the uh, checksum this value this value it is in hexadecimal form and it put in the checksum field this hexadecimal value is inserted in this field and then the segment is transmitted in the receiver side when receiver receives this segment recomputes the checksum if both the checksums the received one and the computed one if the received one and computed one are same then it is assumed that the data is not erroneous the segment or the checksum used in this tcp header is only a very basic step of error control the more error control mechanism is done by the tcp protocol in order to perform the reliable transmission in order to provide the reliable transmission
one more at this point one thing that i wanted to mention that this window field the main function or main intention of including the window field is to perform mainly the flow control and the congestion control which are the primary and most important functions of tcp layer tcp protocol in transport layer and it ensures the reliable transmission so this is all about the tcp fixed header and this fixed header is it comprises of main information related to tcp segment which is necessary for transmission of packets in a reliable environment or reliable communication mode 